Hello, y'all. It's 3.15 p.m. 3.15 p.m. <clears throat> so, um, well, wow. So I guess I couldn't fight it. So I finally, I think it was, um, yeah, I came here, I guess, right almost immediately after they opened and then I came in here, I had to use the bathroom again. And then, wait, I think I did. Well, I came in here. <clears throat> and so, um, I dozed off and fell asleep. And I don't remember if I woke up around one thirty or 2 o'clock. So, it was like I slept hard. I know I slept hard, I guess, to make up from the, um, well, my sleep was, wasn't that great the night before, I mean, last night, but, you know, I got a little bit of sleep, but, you know, the night before, I got no sleep and no nap. <clears throat> so, I'm wondering if the, um, <laughs> if the chicken salad <laughs> probably helped me, you know, to get to sleep a little better, you know. So, since, well, I guess we got, like, a, um, less than 45 minutes to be here. I'm not, I'm not at the other library like I usually would be on Saturdays. I'm over here. <clears throat> but, see, I had to stay downtown in order to try to get, you know, a little help for, you know, panhandling and donations and stuff. It's so hard to get, it, you know, help and stuff. So, um, so at the moment, I, um, so I, I, I probably going to need to panhandle for dinner again tonight. Because I think I have one paper, probably one paper dollar maybe about a dollar and some loose coins approximately I didn't count it and then you know under five dollars in the bank so excuse me <clears throat> so um well So I'm going to need to have the panhandle <coughs> and try to, you know, sometimes, you know, I ask straight up, you know, ask people, is there any way you can help me get dinner to eat? And sometimes be like, every once in a while I get like a rare person be like, well, I'll buy you drum dinner, you know, and then they use their debit card or credit card to help me out, you know. But being homeless, it's like you're not always, you don't always need money for, for, for food all the time. And that's what people expect to not only get you food, but sometimes you might need money for personal hygiene items or this or that or whatever, bus fare, or you might want to get your little laundry done, a small load of laundry. If you're one of those ty type of functioning homeless people, who do try to better yourself and try to get out of your situation, keep fighting, but being targeted, they make sure they keep you down. They don't let you try to improve yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so it looks like, well, yesterday, you know, we, I kept on getting these messages you know, warnings about such dangerous and severe weather. And then later on, everything was fine later on. <clears throat> and so today and tomorrow, it's not supposed to rain. It's not supposed to rain today and tomorrow. So, um, it's not supposed to rain today and tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then... Um, this, like, Monday and the rest of the week, I guess, is supposed to rain. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Well, since I dozed off and took a much-needed, deep, hard nap, I didn't get to work on writing anything at all. And so my heart feels heavy right now. Like a lot of pressure on my heart and um, from, the, I guess, the sleep deprivation. And I, there was one point I felt it beating really hard. <clears throat> Sometimes, I mean, kind of like for no reason earlier. And so I've been, you know, it's more so when I'm on the streets. I don't know, it's kind of weird because I've talked before about when I'm homeless on the streets and sleeping outside, I don't get sick as much. You know, I don't get that many ear infections. My seborrheic dermatitis is way better. And, um, you know, I have less colds and flu. <laughs> Whatever other sickness, I end up being less sick. But, you know, having to be out on the streets and hypervigilant and stuff, I got to get sick another way. You know, sometimes on the streets or with the roof over my head, they hit me with the energy weapons. I got to be sleep deprived and this, that, whatever. And me dealing with the inflammation and swelling. And other targeted individuals say that too, you know, about how, like, my, I have to deal with my ankles and legs swelling. And sometimes my arms will be swollen too if it's bad enough. The swelling is bad enough. And the fluid retention and the swelling from the sleep deprivation, um, sometimes I feel like as if balloons are growing inside of my feet, the best way I can put it, like water balloons, more like, I feel like water balloons are growing, in, and it's like as if I'm walking on fluid inside of my feet, and it's like, um, it feels kind of awkward, so, um, <clears throat> So, I mean, and then they sleep deprive me for days. And then I finally get me some sleep. And then having this forced urination, like, and then with my heart, um, I can feel the um, fluid. I can feel it draining from my heart as I'm peeing but back then I didn't used to be able to feel that you know but I can feel like fluid draining from my heart and I used to have like when I was trying to do this flagging position in New Orleans with the temp job called shift gig and one day um I mean I was like the parking thing, you know, like the football games or whatever, tailgate parties. And so I was days of sleep deprived and it landed me in an emergency room and I had to go to Turo, T-O-U-R-O, Turo Hospital. And those bastards try to say that there was nothing wrong with me and stuff. And um, I think I was taking a bentonite clay and they were trying, and I was like depressed and homeless on the streets, you know, eating a whole bunch of sweets and sugar and stuff. But they would tell me, like, your blood sugar is 73, or your blood pressure is kind of low, and this and that, whatever. But, um, you, you know, the so it's like one lady was kind of nice, but the other lady acted like a know it all narcissist, and she really triggered me and made me mad that day. And they acted like they almost didn't want to help me. They didn't want to let me use the bathroom. And they didn't want to let me, um, I think I remember they didn't want to let me use the bathroom. And they told me that I couldn't sit inside and have a medical emergency. That I had to go outside. And there were security guards in um, downtown New Orleans. <clears throat> so then Turo Hospital, the paramedics came and got me. And they treated me bad. And they try to make, like, because those 
security guards, they were trying to narcissistically bully, harass, and lecture me. You know, one lady was a little nicer about it, and the other lady, she was just a total asshole, you know. So, they would try to bully, harass, and, like, and a few other people, black women, narcissistic black women from New Orleans, you know, try to bully, harass, and lecture me, telling me, like, it's my own fault, you know, telling me that the fluid is going to travel to my heart and kill me. You know... And this the the gang stalking network doing this to my body. They're doing this to me, you know. <clears throat> so they're making it like as if I deserve to die or something. Or like this is my fault with all this and like I still feel heavy pressure on my heart. Heavy pressure on my heart and stuff. And people don't give a damn about me being on the streets. You know, forced on the streets. And stuff, and then I heard it messes with you mentally, and you probably might not even be a naturally crazy person, but being days of sleep deprived that does something to you, and you may not even appear to be functioning that properly because you have lack of sleep and stuff. And so, some people compare sleep deprivation to being drunk, you know. So, um, but I noticed something I like the other library better than this one. But when I'm over here, I mean, I feel more comfortable over there. But when I'm over here, uh, I don't feel comfortable being over here. And um, I really don't feel that comfortable being over here at this library and being, like, sexually harassed and stuff or bullied by other, like, homeless men and stuff. And um, they've done me some disrespectful, weird things, and I quit coming here for a while, and then I came back. You know, when I first was new to Pensacola, I was coming here. Some One day, there was a point in time when I first came here, I was going to the beach every day, but I don't remember getting in the water every day, you know, and I don't remember gang-stalking perverts, like, wanting to monitor and watch me shower and stuff while I'm at the beach with my clothes on, of course, and, um, <clears throat> and so, um, it's just all around uncomfortable. And it's like every day and every night is a, a Halloween nightmare freak show. Um, and then earlier today, I didn't get to catch it on film, but they had a perp drive by, I think with a red SUV and they had, or a truck or something. And he had like um, a stuffed animal cat sitting in the passenger, it was a white and black striped cat sitting, I don't think it was a tiger, it looked more like a cat, and um, it might have been a tiger, and it was, they, he, he positioned the tiger to be sitting in the passenger, the, the stuffed animal tiger, or whatever, he had it sitting in the passenger side with his arm raised, raised up like as if he's saying hi, and the thing was like, something like that. And I figured he, you know, the man, he passed right by me, you know. So um, even during the daytime, like, I would see, there was a point in time where I would see, like, so many subliminal death references at me, you know, or, you know, like, dead store, I mean, like, dead toy skulls like on the ground or something or for some reason there was a point in time for a brief moment every time I looked down there was like a doggone um I had to watch watch myself because there was they try to set set frequent traps to try to set me up to um step in doo-doo dog doo-doo or whatever they would you know and it's like the dog doodoo -doo would be there before I walked there. And so they were also, um, they would also try to do stuff like, see, that's somebody's cell phone. They also would, um, so then one time I have a picture. Well, I mean, I took it on my phone, and it's probably on my gang stalking proof on my other, um, the main target about a psych world channel is a um a, a picture of a skeleton sitting in the back of a car 
and waving. It's creepy. And then, you know, I I don't get it that often, but I've gotten it a few times with, you know, the casual, you know, the cat. I think I had it recently happen, you know, the hearse driving by casually, you know. And so for some reason I would have like, I would also see like used condoms just randomly on the floor, I mean on the ground wherever I walk. And in New Orleans and here in Pensacola, I would be like, it would be like, I thought it was a good thing. I didn't realize it would be part of the gang stalking. But, you know, I thought it was like just random, pure luck that, wow, um, you know, if it would be like, I thought it was a good thing that, you know, if I just randomly found a $5 bill on the ground, on Canal Street in New Orleans a, a few times, and a few times here in Pensacola as well. I'm like, well, my one, I mean, part of one meal is taken care of. See, they're raising their prices on food and everything, and now everybody's saying, make sure you really read your labels and watch what you eat because the government's starting to force you to eat crickets and locusts without your knowledge, uh, nuclear uh, crickets and stuff without your knowledge. And so, you know, everybody's talking about stock up, prepare, and they talk about this nuclear warning in New York or whatever, some kind of nuclear thing that they're warning in New York, at the malls in New York and stuff, you know. So the New new World Order, they're planning something. And I, I mean, I don't know how the unhoused can be prepared. I went to ask around and those popular fake preppers would get rude with me or get an attitude with me and stuff. So I'm like, well, should I just, when the, the shit really hit the fan, if I just should just give up and let myself die? Give up on trying to fight and just let myself die? Because I feel like I don't, I mean, I don't even know where to go out in the woods or what location to go to. I don't have a car. And, um... You know, I don't have a vehicle, <clears throat> so I don't know how I can go out in the woods, and I don't know what location to go to to go out in the woods. And, you know, the idea of identifying, you know, certain fruits or vegetables <clears throat> or plants and, or to go near a river and try to clean and sanitize the water to make it potable, I guess, to drink. I have, in the past, tried to research and read on survival and stuff, and I don't know, because I'm hearing so many different stories, like, some people say that, of course, working underneath an employer is slavery, modern-day slavery, and other people saying that being housed is slavery, too. Um... So they say that living with like an electricity bill and utility bills, I mean, where you have to pay bills and stuff, they say that slavery. And so, um, because if you get a house, they make it to where it's against the law for you to live in a house with no electricity. But, you know, I heard stories about if people build a teepee or a hut or this or that to, out in the wilderness to go and survive. You know, and I heard that when the stuff come cracking down, excuse me, I heard people are saying you should flee the cities. Flee the cities, but nobody wants to tell me where I can go. They make it like it's some hidden secret of where to go, you know. And I've been, you know, hearing, you know, more about the food shortages and inflation and microchip shortages and shortage of this and that and costs rising on everything, unemployment crisis. And but then, you know, people still want to be picky about, you know, <clears throat> giving you a job. But then people don't want to allow you to venture out on your own because see if, if you're an entrepreneur and you can 
control, controlling your own thing, then I guess the government can have less control over you. But it seems like the only way that you can be a successful entrepreneur is you got to sell out. They don't want to let you do it and not sell out. And then you will be a satanic slave and puppet. And then you got to put Satan's branding on all your products. And then that's how you get your dog on success. Not because you're a damn good cook or because you're a great singer or what a great author or actor or actress or whatever. Because if um if I would have sold out and then have Satan's blessings on my freaking blog and my short stories and stuff, <laughs> wow, it's like, that could be like the exact same writing and I could still be making like tons of money all because I sold out. And I'm not trying to do that. You know, I want, but then again, they would try to tweak things and try to control everything. That's why I felt like I don't want to conform to rules. I just want to write freely, you know. Um, yesterday, when I wrote the blog post about the hair, um, I know that I need to go back and <clears throat> proofread and edit but I'm not trying to be the best or the fanciest. I just want to improve it a little bit. But um, I don't know if later today if I'll get a chance to write anymore. I don't know. <clears throat> but I hate right now because I'm downtown, but I got to like utilize between at least 4 and 9 o'clock to try to <clears throat> panhandle for enough money for food to eat. And then, um, and maybe I'll set, a, set aside a little bit for bus fare and anything else I might need. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting kind of low <clears throat> on my um, bentonite clay bottle. And um, I took it internally for a week. And so, um, my, you know what, my menstruation is just about over and I got to be on these doggone streets, you, you know, and being, when they force to urinate me and I smell bad and it seems like I'm disappointed that there's nothing I can do about it. I got to just walk around smelling bad and feeling embarrassed. <clears throat> so, um, so, I mean. <clears throat> Excuse me. They got just so many pe fake people in this world. So many people that are just fake. Fake. And so, um. So, I mean, that's another reason why, you know. <clears throat> it's like people tell me that I have, you know, a pure soul or a beautiful soul and stuff, but then they use it to abuse, exploit, and abuse me, and then after I out it and expose, I mean, expose the truth about them, then after I expose the truth about them, then they, um, all of a sudden they have a change of narrative, and now I'm the dirty one, and then they can't find any truth, so they use the slander campaign, they repeat the slander campaigns that they heard about me, you know, <clears throat> so anyway, um, I'm sorry that I'm kind of like all over the place mentally right now because I still need more sleep and I have all that heavy pressure on my heart and then I feel the pressure um, taking less than three more minutes to say what I need to say. <clears throat> so, um, and now it slipped my mind what I needed to talk about. Oh, one thing, um, I noticed that my um, subscribers are raising um, but the thing is, I don't think I'm getting more supporters. I think I'm getting an increase in the amount of haters. Because all these com hate comments I get, the same tired shit, oh, get help, you need medication, you're crazy. You know, they subscribe just to say that, you know. <clears throat> so, 
the sh YouTube shorts feature, I think is was helping. The, and I don't even do the shorts intentionally. I just, you know, do however long I feel I need to. You know, or if it's need to be long, it need to be long. If it need to be short, it need to be short. But, you know, I think that's really helping more views and subscribers and stuff. Thank you, YouTube. So, um, but anyway, <clears throat> so I, I really think my haters is growing. The gang stalking, more online gang stalkers is growing. So I'm, I'm not even getting, you know, that much more supporters, maybe a few more supporters, you know, a couple more new people, but not that many. <clears throat> but thanks for the dog on subscribers, because now I just hit like 551, um, and this is naturally in the online purpose of falsely accusing me of buying subscribers. What 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 money if I don't have any? You know, what money do I have to buy subscribers for? I ain't that doggone desperate. So, um, so I mean, I want to do some more writing today if I have the opportunity. But if not, then tomorrow. <clears throat> but if I would had been at the other library I can kill time at the mall and eat like I usually do but I don't have anywhere I can sit around for a few hours um not downtown <clears throat> so I guess I have to utilize that time to panhandle but if y'all have anything y'all can spare you know to donate everything is in the description box of this video if y'all can you know help me out what whatever and so um the video is going to roll over because I got a little more I need to say so <clears throat> I checked 